My name is Pastor Brenda Vaughn, and I am excited to be before you today. Thank you so much. I am, I am, I am so excited to be before you today. I love the community here. Um, I love the way we love each other. Can I say that? <laughs> um, I, I love the community here. It's just, it's so beautiful, so beautiful. So today I will be coming to you from Exodus 18, verse 5 through 16. Let's get, let's get the word of God. Let's, let's jump right on in. Why waste time, right? <laughs> I'm not a fan of wasting time. I guess that's the project manager in me. No time wasted. <laughs> so it reads, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, together with Moses' sons and wife, came to him in the wilderness where he was camped near the mountain of God. Jethro has sent word to him, I, your father-in-law Jethro, am coming to you with your wife, with your wife and your sons. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed down and kissed him. This is respect. They greeted each other and then went into the tent. Moses told his father-in-law about everything the Lord had done to Pharaoh and the Egyptians for Israel's sake and about all the hardships they had met along the way and how the Lord had saved them. Anybody met some hardships along the way? But God saved you, right? <laughs> Jethro was delighted to hear about all the good things the Lord had done for Israel and rescuing them from the hand of the Egyptians. He said, Praise be to the Lord who rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians and of Pharaoh and who rescued the people from the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all other gods, for he did this to those who had treated Israel arrogantly. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and other sacrifices to God. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat a meal with Moses, father-in-law, in the presence of God. Isn't it a blessing when you can celebrate others? When you, when you see God in others? When you see God moving in others? Right? It's an honor also when you can share what God is doing in your life and see that other people celebrate it. You know, they have nothing to benefit from it, but they celebrate it because they see that your heart is for it and they have a heart for you and they see that God is in it. So they decide to celebrate with you, not become envious of it. But if I see God can do it for you, then surely he can do it for me. So I'm going to celebrate you where you are, where God has brought you through, because wherever I am, I know that God will show up too. And that's a beautiful thing. And listen what 13 says. The next day Moses took his seat to serve as judge for the people. And they stood around him from morning till evening. That's a, that's a long standing, Lord. <laughs> when his father-in-law saw that all that Moses was doing for the people, he said, what is this you are doing for the people? Why do you alone sit as judge while all the other people stand around you from morning to evening? Moses answered him, because the people come to me to seek God's will. Whenever they have a dispute, it is brought to me and I decide between the parties and inform them of God's decrees and instructions. Moses' father-in-law replied, what you are doing is not good. <laughs> He's lifting above his weight class. <laughs> you and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. Come on, lifting too heavy, lifting too heavy. You're in your call, but you're lifting too heavy. Listen now to me and I will give you some advice and may God be with you. May God be with you. We already see that Moses respected him because when he came in, he took a knee to him. So he's going to receive this advice, I'm sure. He's going to receive this advice. That's why it's important that who you bring near, you respect. Because I can't just listen to anyone. I can't just take your advice. I can't just take it. I got to respect and honor you. 
that's experience right there. Teach them his decrees and instructions and show them the way they are to live. Teach them. Teach them his decrees and instructions and show them the way they are to live and how they are to behave. These things you can teach. Somebody say, but, 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 but select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain and appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Have them serve as judges for the people at all times, but have them bring every difficult case to you. The simple cases, they can decide themselves. That will make your load lighter. Come on, somebody say, make your load lighter. Make your load lighter. Because they will share it with you. They'll share it with you. If you do this and God so commands, so I'm giving you advice, but still God has to command it to happen. You will be able to stand the strain. Have you ever straight, listen guys, when I take groceries in, I try to take them all in at one time and I strain. So now I say to myself, boys, come out and help me. So the boys all come out, they all come running out and they come grab the bag so I'm no longer straining. I ask for help. If you do this and God so commands, you will be able to stand the strain and all these people will go home satisfied. So this is not just for you, but it's also for the people you are serving. So you don't just benefit, but they benefit too. Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he said. He chose capable men from all Israel and made them leaders of the people. Officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They served as judges for the people at all times. The difficult cases they brought to Moses, but the simple ones they decided themselves. You can have your seat. It's a little hot up here. <laughs> and the title of this sermon is Help, I Need a Spotter. Help. I need a spotter. I need a spotter. Have you ever felt like you were lifting above your weight class and straining while operating in your calling, your purpose, the roles in life? Have you ever felt like you were straining to carry everything to operate in your call, the things that God has called you to, the things that you love to do? But you, you need a spotter. So I was watching a show on, um, I think it was ESPN, and I was watching, um, it was women. They were weightlifting. And as they got prepared to lift the weights, they were in their weight classes. And as they got prepared to lift the weights, they would lock in their legs and dig deep with their heels on both feet, lock in and dig deep. But they had spotters on both sides of them. And you could see that the spotters were looking, they were waiting, for if there ever came a moment that they needed to jump in and assist with them weights, they were ready and prepared. Now, let me tell you this. If I go to the gym and I decide to lift weights and I need a spotter, I am not bringing someone that is not experienced. Come on now. <laughs> I'm not. Right? I asked my husband. I said, babe, you lift weights. Would you lift with me <laughs> and expect me to spot you? And he said, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not, because I cannot lift over 300. Matter of fact, I don't even think I can lift over 150, um, but not yet. <laughs> yes, yes. So a, a spotter is a person who observes or assists a gymnast in weightlifting during a performance or practice in order to minimize the chance of accidents and injuries. See, I was thinking about um, the times in my life where I needed a spotter. I remember when I, um, I was newly married, I had had a baby a year later, and I was stressed because I was trying to do everything that I thought I was supposed to do. That means cook, clean, um, take care of the baby. And at the time I was a stay at home mom too. I did not reach out to other people for assistance because I thought it was my job. 
So when my husband came home, I wanted to make sure he had a meal on the table and the laundry was folded and the house was spick and span clean and the baby was clean. And, but babies throw up and that's a whole lot of cleaning. But I, I was doing everything I thought I was supposed to do until I crashed and burnt. One day my husband came home and I had cut all my hair off and I was in a dark room sitting there and he walked through the door and he said, where's my kid? <laughs> and when I snapped out of it, I ran into the bathroom and I, I saw my hair sitting in the sink and I called every beautician that I could find at the time and asked them if they could help me, help me fix what I had just done. Um, of course, they couldn't help me grow the hair back, but, <laughs> but maybe they could shape it up a little bit or something. But um, I, as I look back, I wish I would have reached out to people. I wish I would have invited experienced people in, maybe women that were mothers, women that were married, people that were seasoned with dealing with children, with having a, a, a household. And I wish I would have invited people in to spot me because surely they would have probably picked up on the indications that I was simply doing too much. See, my pediatrician told me, she said, sleep when the baby sleeps. I, didn't, I did not do that. I was up cooking. <laughs> my pediatrician said, make sure that you have people around you that can help you. I didn't do that because I thought that it was all mine. It, it was all my duties. I was the wife. It was, it was all my burden to carry. And in life, we need a spotter. I recently changed careers and... Here recently, I looked online for a networking event because I need other people that are more experienced in this field than me. I need other people that could come alongside me and help me out. I need a spotter in this field, someone that has a lot more experience than what I do because I am coming in with the bare minimum. To myself, I think that. <laughs> But there's others that has been in the field for years that I'm hoping to go to this event and network. Have you invited people in come on. to come and help spot you? Yes. There are people that are newly divorced. Have you invited people in yes. to come and spot you? Yes. Newly married, invite people in to come help and spot you, to ask you, did you have that date night? I know you've been working late. I know you have all of these projects. Yes. But are you still writing those love notes to your loved one? Yes. Are you still pursuing them? Invite people in that will hold you accountable. That will be honest with you. Yes. Who you respect their opinion. Yes. You value their time and they value yours. Yes. Proverbs 27 and 9 reads, the heartfelt counsel of a friend is as sweet as perfume and incense. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10 reads, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. My first point is, who do you have in close proximity? Who has a bird's eye view? Moses invited Jethro in, told Jethro of all God had done for Israel. Moses gave Jethro access to see him in the wilderness. Some of us don't allow people access to us in the wilderness. We are waiting for the revealing phase. So if I can just go over here and just toil away and build something, then I'll share it with them once it's done. But then you're burning yourself out. That's right. You're burning yourself out. So you have to invite people in to the wilderness. The wilderness could be the building phase, something that you're building upon. We are waiting for the revealing phase. If you don't allow the proper people access, you'll burn yourself out. And then you will try to create the will of something that has already been created. You try to, to, to recreate the will and that takes too much time. Yes. Like somebody has already done that. Yes, somebody already has the answer to something you're trying to put together. Right. 
Invite someone you trust and respect into your wilderness. Moses could receive Jethro's suggestions because he trusted and respected him. Invite someone with experience. Jethro was also a respected leader of the tribes of Midian. Right. Exodus 18, 17 through 18 reads, This is not good. Moses' father-in-law explained, You're going to wear yourself out and the people too. This job is too heavy a burden for you to handle all by yourself. See, when you invite people in, here's the thing about tooling. When you are working on something that is so that is close to you and you're passionate about it, you're busy working in it that you can't see the things around it that needs to be established, need to be built because you're so busy at the work. So many people depending on you. You're so busy at the work in the working phase that you don't have a moment to evaluate. You don't have a moment to take inventory because you're afraid that if you pause, then something might fall because everything is depending on you. Proverbs 12, 26 reads, the godly give good advice to their friends. The wicked lead them astray. So it is important that whoever you take advice with, you take advice from, that you know their heart. You know their heart. It's not a matter of them being available or they're around, they they see what things don't, but do you have a heart for what I have a heart for? Do you have a heart for God? Do you have a heart to see things done well, with excellence, with, with God in every detail? Do you have a heart for the house? Point two, don't compromise. Don't compromise. Jethro gave Moses a list of shared values the people should have. They were going to be Moses' spotters, but Moses couldn't select just anyone. He couldn't select just anyone. They had to be men who fear God, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain. Don't become so desperate for help that you are not willing to go through the vetting phase. Don't become too desperate for help because some people will make themselves available to you because they're attracted to the anointing on you. Some people will make themselves available to you because what you have going on looks good. If you follow influencers online, people follow them because they are attracted to the image. They're attracted to what they see. Right? So just because they are available does not make them capable. So Jethro said, make sure they are capable people. Jethro also said, he said, look, they have to have a heart of God. You can teach them the law. You can teach them these things. You can teach them how to live, but you can't teach someone integrity. You can't teach someone how to love right. You can't teach someone how to be honest. Those are things that they have to have to be connected to you. If you're going to be connected to what God has called me to do, then there are requirements you must fit. Because I wrestle with my flesh enough. I don't need what you have going on to come and bring me down and have me shadow box it. <laughs> Your flesh and mine. Yeah. That's real. So it's important that we vet who we bring in close proximity because they will either elevate you or they will wear you down. You will help me lift the strain or you will restrain me. You're either going to help me run fast or you're going to trip me up. And I can't afford to be compromised because compromising may derail the call. It may set you back. It may abort the mission too. So it is important that we vet who we bring in close proximity. There's a difference between capable and available. Someone being available, don't qualify them as capable. Notice Jethro, 
He made it clear of the qualities, decrees, and provide instructions and show the way they ought to live and how they ought to behave. I will rather wait for the right one yes. than to shadow box with the wrong one. I would rather wait. I would rather wait. That come, that's even with marriage. Yeah. I'll rather wait. Yeah. Because if I'm going to fight, I'm going to be fighting for the right things, baby. Yeah. Because merch does require you to fight. Yeah. But I'm not about to be shadow boxing no demon. <laughs> because I could not wait. Yeah. So even in that, I'm not willing to compromise. Yeah. With friendships, too. Yeah. I'm not willing to compromise. Because if you're a friend, that means I'm inviting you into this. That means you understand my time is valuable. Yes. That means you understand my love is valuable. Yes. My ear, me listening to you, me interceding for you. Yes. In friendship, there's things you don't do for everybody, but you'll do for a friend. Yes. I won't pull up for everybody, but baby, I'll pull up for you. Yes. If we friends, we friends. We riding together on some things. It's covenant. covenant. <laughs> yes. It's a love. Yes. Proverbs 13, 20 reads, the one who walks with the wise will become wise, but a companion of fools will suffer harm. I can't afford it. Come on, somebody, I can't afford it. First Corinthians 15, 33 reads, do not be deceived. Don't be deceived. They're coming with the resumes. They're coming with the social media platforms. I could bring you over here and help you blow up too. No, baby, because what I have attached to me, baby, is different from what you have attached to you. I can't afford to compromise. I'm sure you can elevate me on your platform, but there's a platform of God that exceeds the abundantly and above all I could ever imagine. Bad company corrupts good morals. I'd rather have my morals intact than to have a lot of company around me. I'd rather have my morals intact than to be popular. I can't afford to compromise. Your children can't afford you to compromise because they're looking at us. They're looking at us. They're looking at the way we respond to things. The scripture also talks about being around angry people. It makes you angry. You ever been around somebody that was angry? And then you go home and you're like, oh, you're like, where did that come from? <laughs> like, where did that come from? It's true. It's like you can go out with someone and they are a Debbie Downer. I hope no one in here is named Debbie. But... <laughs> It's not personal. But look, you can go out with someone and they could just change your whole mood. You were so excited about getting outside and linking up and leaving work behind and you left the house clean. You felt like a winner and you went to meet with them and they were like a tornado and they just <laughs> tore your mood to pieces. It is important that we are in good company. Oh my God, I have an amazing group of friends that when I go out with them, I feel refreshed. I feel replenished. I feel like they're my spotters. I feel like they help me to lift heavy, even when I'm lifting outside of my class. I feel like they come up beside me. And when I'm out of character, they could bring correction because I respect their opinion. I've tested their hearts. Yes. And it lines up with the will of God. Amen. It lines up with the will of God. Even before coming here, I received several text messages. I prayed you preach and I pray that God be with you. My spotters yes. sending me scriptures yes. throughout the week. My spotters, you need a cup of coffee? Yes, I need coffee. My spotters yes. helping you lift heavy. Because you are operating in your call, but with your call comes other things. With your call comes other duties. It's like the rest, it's like on a job, other duties as assigned. As assigned. And how come as assigned is like more than what you assigned me? Oh, yeah, is that even possible? 
who? Can I go back to HR about this? Like, like, that's not right. <laughs> but your pointers help you to lift heavy. To lift beyond your weight class. Help your knees not to buckle. Because when you are lifting, sometimes you're lifting too heavy and your knees want to give out. But if you bring people along, they can take some of that weight. Shift the weight. I hear God saying, shift the weight. Shift the weight. It's your call. You know what God has called you to, but you are not intended to do it alone. God has also raised up some people to come alongside you and help you to carry it. Point through three. I'm going to ask the the, um, musician to come back. I should have turned on my Apple Watch because I feel like I'm working out. (laughs) Point three, if God is for us, who can be against us? Come on, somebody. If God, I I need y'all to say it. Come on. If God is for us, who can be against us? Now say me. If God is for me, who can be against me? Come on, who can be against me? Who can be against me? A spotter of an auto racing team. Oh, God. So I was, I was studying the different forms of a spotter. And my family, they love NASCAR. They love NASCAR. So I was like, oh, they're going to love this. <laughs> so a spotter also with NASCAR, he sits up in the tower and he talks to the driver about the road ahead. He sees what's ahead of him. And he tells them about the road of head. And then there's a spotter in the military too, an aviator or aircraft employed in locating or observing enemy positions. Because look, when you're busy toiling, you're busy working in your call, sometimes you can't locate the enemy, yes. but your spotters can. Yes, right. your, your spotters can. Uh-huh. They can. They can locate the enemy. So Deuteronomy 31 and 8 reads, The Lord is the one who will go before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or abandon you. Do not be afraid or discouraged. And when I was reading about the spotter of the NASCAR and how he sits in the tower and he talks to the driver, I picture God. I picture God. I picture being in life and going through life and God speaking to me. Learn to make a left instead of a right. Accelerate. Shift gears. Yes. I picture God. Slow down a little. Uh-huh. Get into your word. Yeah. Shift gears. Yes. I picture God telling me which way to go, what danger was up ahead, yes. and preparing me. Have you ever been prepared for something? Yes. And then when you got to it, you were like, that's what you were doing. Yes. Okay. So God is our ultimate spotter. We can invite people and the right people Uh to be with us, but we must invite God, the one and true living God, Uh to sit in the tower and give us directions and be a compass and be a light to our footsteps. Uh If we don't have him, then we have nothing at all. Uh We have nothing at all. If we don't have God in his rightful position in our lives, the loudest voice, the loudest voice in our hearts. If we don't have him, then we have nothing at all. Walking in my calling, but too busy to take time with God. And that's what Jethro saw when Moses was out there from sun up to sundown. That's what Jethro saw. How is it possible that you can sit here and have these people standing here and you counseling them? What time do you have with God? But see, your spotters will also make sure you have time. Can I come watch your child for you while you and your spouse go out? Can I partner with you in prayer with anything? And stop saying that they're nosy. Sometimes you need people in your business. 
Sometimes you need people in your business, in your wilderness, in your mess, in your building phase. So you don't waste time. You don't try to recreate the wheel. You don't strain to lift. You don't burn out. Send the invitation and invite the right people in. But send the invitation to God daily and invite him in daily. God, here I am. It's a new day. It's a new day, but here I am. A open heart, arms stretch wide. Here I am, God. Search me, Lord God. Search my heart, Lord, my inner man, Lord God. Expose everything that's not of you, Lord God. Lift everything, Lord God, that is not of you, Lord God. Clean and purify me, Lord God, that I may worship you. Dwell in me, Father, that your works be done because you can be in your call, operating in your call, but not be effective. Burned out because you have not invited the right people. You have not invited God into the process. He wrote the manuscript. How could you not invite the author? Come on. Uh, uh, you're not invite the author. Yes. See, you're called. You have purpose. So you have the gifts to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Some of us are wonderful public speakers. We have the gift to do it. Some of us could sing. I can't. But we have the gift to do it. But if you go without the anointing, oh. who are you really touching? Yes. If you go without the covering of God, who are you really preaching to? Who? What? Will it land? Will it stick? Will it connect with this spirit man? You can be a public speaker, but be empty. You could be one of the best speakers anybody have ever heard intellectually built, but without God, you are a shell. Come on. Empty and void. Yeah. Nobody could feed off anything you're saying. Come on. Because you have not rolled out the carpet yeah. for the one who has sent you. Yeah. You have not invited him in. Uh-huh. And God said, I've called you to do good works. Yeah. But you took off running because you thought that the good works had to be accomplished tomorrow. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you forgot me. Because you're worried about the time frame of when the work should be done. Uh Moses was in the wilderness, but he was still working. Works were still being done. Altars were being built where God had showed up and showed himself victoriously. Well, you can go back and track God at those altars. It was a wilderness, but he invited God in. And for some of us, we are waiting for it to look like something before we even invite God. We are waiting for the seats to fill. We are waiting for a certain amount of followers. We are waiting for respect. We are waiting for a certain amount of honor. And God said, you don't even honor me enough to invite me into what I've called you to do. You haven't even sought me out for direction and guidance, but yet. So you'll find yourself going in circles. You'll find yourself going in circles around the same thing where the wall should have dropped a long time ago. You'll find yourself in the wilderness going around and around and around when you should have been out of that wilderness a long time ago because your obedience has delayed your access. Your obedience to God. Your unobedience has delayed what you were supposed to have full dominion over. So before you can invite Peter, Paul, Luke, or Mark in 
to spot you first you have to allow God to spot you first you have to make sure God is in his rightful place above all above all else God above all no matter where you find me God help me in my unbelief help me in my belief help me in my arrogance help me to submit because the gifts will have you doing well you might look like that at least the gifts will have you looking well to the outer people but the thing you are doing is not effective it's not effective it's not effective it's not a seed that people can plant it flows out and it dies because you have not pursued the creator that can show you the grounds to toil in you have not pursued the creator of the seed the compass you've not pursued him the so Proverbs 18 24 reads one with many friends may be harmed but there is a friend who stays closer than a brother <laughs> there's a friend who stays closer than a brother Deuteronomy 31 8 the Lord is the one who will go before you he will be with you he will not leave you or abandon you. Do not be afraid or discouraged. When I was reading this, I said, God, some of us have abandonment issues. Can you help us? Can you help us, God? Some of us been abandoned before. Can you help us, God? I know you said you're going to go before me, but help me not jump the gun, Father, and run without you because I've been abandoned before. So my conscience is saying, if I take off running, maybe I can get ahead because I'm afraid of being abandoned. So I feel like if I start the race, then surely I might end it, end it well. But no, that's not the case because I can't run without God. It's not the case. I can't run without him. He would never leave me, nor forsake me. God changed the way I'm thinking about things. I can't change the past. I can't change the things that made me feel abandoned. But God, help me trust you with every detail, with every detail, Lord God. If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for me, who can be against me? No weapon formed shall prosper. No weapon formed will prosper. Come on, let's stand on our feet. We're going, we're going to close this out with a prayer. And I also want to close with an invitation to Christ as your Lord and Savior. God, I thank you for your loving grace, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that it's in you that we dwell, Lord God. It's in you we have our being, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that you are the lifter up of our heads, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you have raised a standard, Father. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you see the inner man in us, Lord God. You see what we can become, Lord God, and you see what we have not yet risen to the occasion to be, Lord God. But I pray, Lord God, that you take every imperfection, Father, and make it, Lord God, whatever but you want it to be. I pray, Lord God, that we dwell in you, Father, and not in ourselves. I pray that our flesh will lie down so our spirit man will arise. I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will be able to direct and guide us, Lord God. I thank you in advance for the spotters that are coming alongside us to help us lift heavy things, Lord God. Help us not to strain, Lord God. I pray that our feet won't buckle, our ankles, our knees won't buckle. I pray that we 
won't hit the ground, Father. But I pray, Lord God, that you will help us to stand firm on your word, Lord God. What you have called us to do, Father. What you have called us to be in the earth, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that whatever we sow, we sow on good ground, on good fertile ground, Lord God. I pray that we invite capable people in to help us. I pray you be a spotter and I pray that you send spotters. I pray that you cover us on every side. I pray, Lord God, that even when we're toiling in the field, Lord God, that you will see the enemy coming, Father. Hallelujah, Lord God. And you will do battle for us, Lord God. You do battle for us, Lord God. You do battle for us like Moses. Aaron and her had to lift his hands. When Israel was fighting, the Amalekites, when they were fighting, they had to lift Moses' hands because when his hands would fall, then they would start losing. But his spider stepped in. Aaron and her stepped in. They pulled up a rock and had him have a seat. And then they saw holding up his hands. And when his hands was lifted, they began to win the war again. And they went on to victory and set up an altar there. God is my banner. If you send the right spotters, God, I'm sure the victory is here. In every area of your life where you find yourself lifting heavy out of your weight class, I pray that God will send spotters your way to help you. I pray that God will send trustworthy people, people with integrity, people you won't have to question. I pray that God send good loving friends your way, people that will help you carry the burden. I pray that you don't become weary in your call, but I pray daily you be renewed in God. Daily you be renewed. I pray that you have a healthy community around you, people you can be transparent with, people you can be transparent with, and also people that can be transparent with you. Jethro was able to be transparent with Moses. He said, I don't think this is God's will. She was able to be transparent. And I pray that you invite God in if you have not invited him in as your Lord and Savior. If you have not invited God in as your Lord and Savior, I pray that you invite him in. I can tell you he's a yoke breaker. He's a yoke breaker. He's a burden lifter. He's a peacemaker. He's a nice wind in the storm. (laughs) He'll hold back the enemy. He's a defender. He's a loving savior. He's a just father. He's prince of peace when you need it. If you've not invited God in, I want you to repeat after me. Raise your hands and close your eyes. God, I invite you into my life. I invite you into my heart. I invite you to be Lord and Savior above all. I invite you to speak to me, to guide me, And I trust you. I trust you to be my father. I trust you to bring rebuke when it needs to be. I trust you to guide me. And I trust you to love me well. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. This is a beautiful time in our service where we continue our worship through the giving of our offering and returning of our tithes. Deuteronomy 16, 17 says, every man shall give as he is able in accordance with the blessing which the Lord your God has given you. 
when we think about how good God is to us and how he has blessed us, we can be a spotter for other people through our financial resources. We not only can we come alongside and be a spotter for people with our time and our talents and our friendship, but as God has blessed us, all he's asking is be a funnel, be a channel that I can come alongside and bless my children and our community and our people. And so he calls on you today as he speaks to your heart to bless others in accordance with the way that he has blessed you. And if he's blessed you abundantly, you give abundantly because he has been good to you. And with whatever you have, let us not be called into any kind of shame. We're not here to, to judge the quantity, but the quality of your gift, the quality of our hearts today. And so we're just grateful. We're grateful that God has poured into us and that we have an opportunity to pour back into others. And so let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for blessing us abundantly, abundantly by the means of our own individual lives. And as you have blessed us, Lord God, we freely, happily, and with joy bless others and give back to you. The earth is yours and the fullness thereof. And so we thank you that you have called us to be stewards of that which you have blessed us with and that we are blessed to be a blessing. Father, bless the giver, bless the receiver, multiply all the seeds sown and let it go into good ground and produce a harvest for you in Jesus name. Family, did we get some uh, an amazing word today? Can we just give it up for Pastor Brenda and the message today? Oh, how it touched my heart to, to invite God in to do the thing he's called us to do. And do you know what he has called celebration to do? To move on into John Lewis High School in just a couple of weeks. Amen. Yes, let's clap. Praise God for that. Pastor Anthony shared such awesome news last week that it is time to move. And as we prepare to move in, we just wanna be praying for uh, the people that God is going to draw in. This is exciting and we want not just all of us here and those of you watching online, but start going before God to draw in the people that's going to increase his church, the lives that he's going to be able to touch in this new awesome location. We are going into such a big, beautiful auditorium to house even more people and not just for the worship service, but for our children. Each of our Sea Kids ministries will have their own dedicated room so that they can have a personal encounter with God. He is so good that he wants even our children to know him on their level. And so he's creating room for them to receive him and their education in dedicated spaces. And so stay excited, church. Keep a spirit of expectation as we make this move forward and let's stay prayerful and lift up that we will have a smooth, easy entrance into John Lewis. Good, oh, there we go. Yeah, good morning, good morning. Um, so as we're talking about transitioning to Lewis, um, one of the great teams I get to serve on is Set Up and Tear Down. And what does that look like, right? Thank you for asking. Um, set Up and Tear Down, right? Uh, to a lot of people, when you walk up to this building, it looks like a theater, right? But our setup and our tear down, tear down team is the reason uh, is it takes a theater and turns it into church, right? When we go to Lewis, we're going to take an ordinary auditorium at a school and turn it into church. So on Sunday mornings, our setup team brings in all our equipment, goes to our sea kids room, bring everything up and set it up. So we're calling you. Hey, if that's something you want to do, maybe you're not a talker and don't want to greet. Maybe the usher team is not for you. That's okay. Uh, maybe you can lift things without being a, without needing a spotter because there's some heavy stuff. Then we have a spot for you on the setup and teardown team. And after church, you know, you all get in your car and go in. Our teardown team will make sure everything is put up nice and neat. Um, back into our shuttle to make sure that you all can have a great experience for church uh, next week. So if you want to be a part of that team, I am part of that team. I'm biased and say it is the best team. 
that's just me. Uh, but yeah, please stop by our, our Connect station. Uh, and for those, and I maybe was said, if this is your first time here, thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part of church. And, you know, if you are a first time visitor or if this, you know, is the first time you've been back in a while, we have a connection station outside. Stop by. We just want to say hi. Uh, we just want to know your name. And if you're a hugger, like my wife, maybe give you a hug and say, God bless you and have a great rest of the day. So if this is your first time, please stop by so we can connect with you. Um, but let us pray so we can go home. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you to honor you and bless you, Lord. Thank you for, for lifting the weight that we couldn't carry, Father. Thank you for allowing us to put the weight that we had on our shoulders, Lord. And thank you for taking that uh, for us. Father, we ask that you would forgive us for our sins and where we failed you. Father, we just ask for safe travel and mercies, Father. We thank you for what you're going to be doing at Lewis. We thank you for the people that you will be sending to help further your kingdom and spread your message. We keep everybody safe, and we will see them next week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great rest of the week, good people.